happy Wednesday. Big cheers from me to you. Wow, we have people from all over. I think I win for hottest weather. Second only maybe to Gainesville, Florida, but it is pretty toasty today in Texas. I'm so excited that you had time in space in your schedule to join for today because I think today's coffee meeting is going to be pretty freaking epic. And I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie, be honest with you, because you know, when you just get so excited, kind of like a dog when you get home and the dog's like, whoa, that's me. Cause I'm just so excited to see Jason. And I'm like, whoa. Um, and it could be the matcha tea that I'm drinking. Maybe caffeine wasn't a good idea. But regardless, I'm so excited for our chat because Jason is joining us today and Jason is freaking amazing, okay? He does so many things, so many things. Um, he's a parent, wow, hardest role ever. He is a husband, he is an amazing human being who is the editor-in-chief of Entrepreneur. He hosts not one, not two, not three podcasts. Oh, and he wrote a amazing book with his wife. Jason, hi. Kim, that's so nice. What a nice intro. Cheers to you with my I mean, flat old seltzer. I'm still eating macaroni and cheese out of the box. So mm -hmm. the fact that you can do all these things, like how, what time, how, what? I don't know the answer to that. Well, I do know the answer to that. It's a real struggle. And I honestly, I feel like the answer is that, I feel like the answer, by the way, can we talk about mics for a second? Do I sound okay without the mic in my in my field or should I, I hold mean, it up? You obviously sound better. I kind of like the mic. It's giving me like Mariah Carey, okay. 1998 vibes, Let's quite do it. frankly. We're, going, we're just going to be like, um, I'm working the stage here. Just wait until this you, you drop the mic at the end. <laughs> Don't drop the mic in the beginning. No, we're going to hold on to it in the beginning. Also, I hear this yeah. weird crackling noise, which we're just going to ignore unless it's uh, annoying to people. Um, the answer is that I honestly don't feel like I do everything as well as I should. But I also think that if you feel like you're doing everything as well as you should, then you're probably in some kind of state of complacency. I mean, the last time that I saw you was at an actual coffee shop and we spent a while talking about uh, like finding help. Didn't we? We were like, neither of us could figure out how to find the person who's who's going to plug directly into us and figure out how to... I still haven't found that person. I don't know if you have, but I really struggle. I do almost everything myself in one way or another, right? It's not like I'm running the magazine myself. I have a great team, but I'm a lot of the things that are just kind of personal side are things that I'm mm -hmm. doing myself. And I... But you can't outsource parenting, can well, you? You can have you, you can have an amazing spouse, uh, and you can and you can live with your parents, which is what I am doing as a forty year old man right now, because of COVID. Because I normally live in Brooklyn, we have a small right. two bedroom apartment. It is not a place to be locked in with um, with two small children. So we came out here to Boulder, Colorado, which is where I am right now, and we're living with my parents. Who Do you get good snacks? Because I feel like parents have the best snacks. Yeah, my my dad is a huge, huge snack. So my dad buys a lot of snacks and he chows down on a lot of snacks. And that like makes me want to chow down on a lot of snacks. But the thing is that what my dad is doing that I'm not doing, that you were doing, is he's out there running and working out every day. And I'm not doing that. I'm just eating the snacks, which is probably well, not what you're supposed to do. It's like a coping, right? Like you might be coping with snacks. I'm coping with like one more, one more lap around the block. It'll all be fine, right? One more lap, and it'll I all think be fine. You need to find something. I think that you're doing a healthy thing, healthier than I'm doing because I am getting straight to work in the morning and then I'm working basically until I'm pulled away by the kids and then I have no transition time. And I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs suggest that 
uh, or, or say that what they found is that they, they've created some kind of replacement for their commute because whatever the commute was, it was a moment of mental transition. Yeah. I used to make the subway to work. I needed that time. I don't have it now. I always feel discombobulated at the end of the day when I'm leaving this room that I'm in right now and walking right over there and then dealing with the kids. And for the first half an hour, I'm like totally out of it. So what I need to do is go out and like walk around or something. But that means that I'm subtracting time from work and that makes me very anxious. And that's why I need some help. And know, it all is a vicious circle. So many things. Like yeah. I think most people here, myself included, have like one job, maybe like <laughs> two jobs. Yeah. You have like, I'm not kidding, five. I have too many jobs. Like a lot of, like more than the average bear. So I'll tell you the reason for it. And it's not because I'm a workaholic. I actually don't really think of myself that way. It's because I have this very strong belief in an idea that I call work your next job. And I did not, it's one of those things where I was doing it naturally. And then I realized what I was doing. And then I realized that um, if I really leaned into it and thought strategically about it, that I think that it could take me to amazing places. So let me, I'll tell you, work your next job really fast. Yeah. I was about to be like, wait a minute, yeah. we cannot like, breathe what? past work your next <laughs> yeah. job. Right, right. No, no, no. I don't expect everyone to just Maybe know in. my, my coding. Um, okay. Here's what work your next job is. So in front of you, Kim, in front of me, in front of everybody who's watching this at any time, we have two sets of opportunities. Uh, opportunity set A are the things that are being asked of us at our job. And opportunity set B are the things that nobody is asking us to do, but that are, but that are available to us. And so think about that. When, when you're going to work, if you're, if you're employed or if you run your own company, there are things that you need to do every single day. There are, there are KPIs. There are ways that you're evaluated. There are tasks to do. Of course. These are the, these are opportunity set a, you do really well at them and you are promoted or wh whatever the case is. And then there's opportunity set B, which is the stuff that is available to you that nobody is asking you to do. And that could be stuff at your job, things that you could get involved in, um, mm -hmm. skills that you could learn that are not, um, mandated, or they could be things that are outside of your job, but that are just available to you in the way that if you want to start a podcast, then buy a microphone and figure out some audio editing. And now you have a podcast, they're available to you. And my belief is that opportunity set B is always more important because if you only focus on opportunity set A, then you are only good at the things that you are already doing. You're mm -hmm. only qualified to do the job you already have. And opportunity set B is where you build and grow and develop skills that you don't even know what the ROI is on yet, but that if you focus on them, you're going to be able to jump steps. And so I am obsessed with opportunity set B. I wake up every morning and think, what is opportunity set B? And that's why I do all these things because yeah, uh, we're running entrepreneur magazine is my, is my full-time job and I, and I right. love it. And I, um, I, I you know, I, I want to keep doing it, but I also have to be very aware that life changes and I don't own this company and anything could happen. And so I need to be always building other things, other skill sets, new opportunities. And that can happen inside your job. I know, sorry, I'm now I'm doing a whole monologue, but that can happen inside of your job. I mean, the reason that I'm able, I think, to be at least moderately good at talking to you right now, right? Which is to say like, there are two things that I'm doing right now that I had to learn how to do. Number one is that I'm making eye contact with a camera. And then number two is that I'm talking into a microphone in a voice that I don't naturally talk in. These are two skills that I had to learn. You know how I learned them? Because when I was at Fast Company, I was a print editor, but then they developed a video team. And although nobody asked me to be on the video team, I started volunteering to be on the video team, started being on camera and started learning how to do that. Because because I knew that this would be valuable later. It wasn't really that valuable at Entrepreneur, but I mean, at Fast Company, but it was really valuable later. It was valuable Is in- Is that how you started? So for everybody that doesn't know, Jason has, like I said, three podcasts, but one of the podcasts yeah. is actually at Entrepreneur. So right. using this method, like creating a role for yourself or like, is that a happenstance of like, or did Entrepreneur come to you and say, we want you to do a podcast? No, I was already running you a podcast. It. I had already created, created a podcast moment. called Pessimist Archive. And, and the reason I did that was because I wanted to learn how to podcast because I thought that it would be valuable later. And then I, you know, I got this job as editor in chief of entrepreneur. They were, they, they liked me for 
you know, various reasons. But honestly, one of them was because they knew that I could go out on camera and represent the brand. And that was, right. that was a skill that I learned at Fast Company. And then when they wanted to start developing podcasts, I was like, I already know how to do that. So I will launch your first podcast. That's how I, that's how it happened. And it was because of a skill that I had learned on my own with Pessimist Archive that then slotted nicely into my job. Totally. I mean, what I'm curious about is because you have so many titles, right? Podcaster, editor in chief, mm -hmm. dad, husband, you know, how do you describe yourself? Like if someone comes and says, hi, Jason, I'm at Utah Coffee Shop. What do you do? Right. Which is like a question we hear a lot. Like, what do you do? Like how, yeah. how do you describe yourself? And because I've heard you say in other interviews before that it's, um, that's difficult, right? Like the imposter syndrome of like, I know I face it at when I'm, do I tell, if I'm at a party, do I tell people I'm a CEO of a company? That sounds weird. Do I instead say I started a company? That sounds weird. Like, how do you, how do you describe yourself? And then how did you get to that place? Because I feel like I still struggle with it. How yeah. to answer, which seems like a basic question. It's a great question. It's, it's something that everybody struggles hard. with. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing to discuss because it is so simple and yet I think people really struggle with it. So I, I have, do. I have a couple different things here. Number one, to, to answer, like if I'm at a party, wouldn't it be nice to be at a party these days? Like when I'm standing six right. feet away from somebody in the open air and they ask me what, uh, what I do, I, I actually, I, I, I downplay, um, I say uh, what the, the language that I've come up with, which I don't know, maybe it's obnoxious. Tell me if it's obnoxious. Oh, what I say is, um, so first I just say like, oh, I'm, I'm a writer. Um, and, uh, and then if they ask, oh, what do you, what do you do? And I say, well, I do a couple of different things. Um, I run a business magazine and I have a couple of podcasts. And then I, and then because sometimes people don't, people don't want your whole spiel, you know, they just like, they don't want it. And, uh, and, and, and I'm also, and I'm also very conscious of, not feeling like I'm pitching people, right? Because everything right. that I do can be consumed. And so I feel like if I'm telling somebody about my podcast, then secretly what I'm doing is being like, listen to my podcast. And I, and I don't, I don't want to put people in that position. So I, I let them lead me in. And then if they're like, Oh, what's the magazine? Then I'll be like entrepreneur, Ma entrepreneur magazine. Um, and then sometimes they're like, Oh, that's amazing. And sometimes they're like, oh, all right. And you know, and then we move on. Move and on. That's fine. It's fine. You know, not because whatever, if I'm talking to an accountant, they don't know what entrepreneur magazine is and no. they don't need to. So, um, unless they're running their own accounting firm and then I guess they probably do need to. So, right. um, so that's number one, but, but I will tell you this other thing, which I think that you have, you have ingested this, whether you've done it consciously or not, because I, I you know, in watching how you present yourself, I mean, I, 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 Kim, I think that the first time you ever, I ever became aware of Kim was, was this concept, but that you were doing it just as video it was coffee with Kim. Yep. You were doing a weekly thing on LinkedIn and just started showing up in my feed. And, um, and I, and, and like after two or three times, I was like, she's doing something very smart here. Like, this is good. She's good on camera. She's got a good subject. She's very relatable. And it's like a concept, right? It's like a concept. Right. It's very simple. It's a franchise. It, you know, every everybody who's doing social media should have a franchise, which is something that's simple and repeatable and scalable. And that's, you know, that's what you had. So I was like, Kim's figured something out here. Um, so when I started, I uh, started as editor-in-chief of Entrepreneur Magazine. I was... Um, I was uncomfortable going out and representing as a like thought leader type because I hadn't done it before. It wasn't part of me. I had Your been, things are scary. It's really scary. Your things it's, are scary. It's scary to it's scary to put yourself out there and be like, you should listen to me. You should listen to me. It's hard. It's Super hard. Super hard. And I think a lot of people like we've talked about it week after week, whether it's like Jen or Eric or different people saying like, it's even though, you know, you have to get over it. It's still hard. It's still like a hard hump to get over. So I'll give you the advice that my wife gave me because it was the pivotal advice for this phase of my Love career. Advice. Yeah. And here it is. So I was, I was being asked to be on podcasts and TV shows. Eventually I started saying yes to these things and people would be like, we've got editor in chief of entrepreneur magazine, thought leader in entrepreneurship. We're so excited to have you. And my instinct was to reel that in be like, I'm not a, thought leader, really, I'm a journalist and I, I, I tell story, right? Like it was awful. I was like, dun, right. dun, it was like falling down. I was, I was 
I, I was really? undercutting the reason why they had me on the show. And right. so, um, uh, and then they would try to course correct because otherwise I'm wasting everybody's time. And so I was telling my wife this problem and she said, if they want you to be a thought leader, then be a thought leader. And I realized, so the dog agrees with me. I realized that the only difference between being a thought leader and not being a thought leader is that the thought leader is willing to say they're a thought leader. That's it. The only difference. Own it. Know the vocabulary. Right. Know what your audience is looking for. Listen. Build in feedback. And then just keep going and figure out how you're valuable. And one other thing, if I can, if I can add, I know I talk way too much. Just cut me off. Um, uh, one other thing is... Um, Listen, I, I realized this. This was really yeah. bad. Listen to the questions that people ask you because what they're really doing is they're telling you what they think your value is to them. Mm -hmm. And once you figure that out, then you can deliver that value. And so I started paying attention to what people were asking me and then going out and getting answers to that stuff and then saying it and uh, going from there. And part of being a thought leader, though, is is this, right? Like, it's being on video. It's doing things like this. So, I, you know, I think Jeff brings up a great point. Like, video is very fearful. Public yeah. speaking, by the way, consistently, year over year, people say, like, oh, my God, do mm -hmm. not make me speak in front of a right. room full of people. Like, how did you go about getting over that? Or Here's the Yeah. Because, you're Kim, you're not talking to me right now. You're talking to a character named Jason Pfeiffer. You are. You are. Okay, right? Beyonce did this. I think it was Beyonce, and then she had like the Queen Bee was her alter ego. Yeah. Was it Queen Bee uh, or B? Yeah. I don't or, know. But Beyonce had an alter yeah. ego, and I was like, right. If Beyonce's but, doing it. Exactly. Mm, you, here's bad. It's it's not so bad. I, I I appreciate um the comparisons that you've just made between both of us and Beyonce. So you have a lot in common with Beyonce. Let's I be have honest. a lot in common with Beyonce. Dance moves. You should hear my singing. It's really, singing. really good. Yeah, no, it's really awful. My mm -hmm. singing. Um, so here's here's what I mean by that you're you're speaking to a character. Um when I started listening to what people were asking me and I started to come to understand what it is that they wanted from me, then I, 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 I realized something. And what I realized was that they don't want me. They want the part of me that's useful to them. That's it, right? Nobody cares. Nobody cares about me. Kim, nobody cares about you. What they care about is the parts of us that are useful to them. And that's right. fine because that's the only, that's a, who, who would want to care about anything else? And so I created this character of me and this character yeah. of me is hyper focused on the things that my audience wants it has a it has a kind of vocabulary and a way of thinking it has a menu i have a menu in my head of answers to things and anecdotes right and and uh, and so anytime anybody asks me anything i just kind of pull it out right i think yeah. of the interlocking parts so you just stitch them together <laughs> like let me get it out of the old backpack here exactly Exactly. Like, what are you looking for? You like, oh, you need, uh, you know, you need the story about the dogfish yeah. beer. Okay. Do you, take, do you take this character? Okay. So you also get to interview, by the way, you get to interview really cool people. Yeah. You know, the rock is there. Do you bring that? Does that character almost like Borat? Like does, <laughs> do the other Jason interview people yeah. or do you interview people who interviews people? Oh, that's a good question. It depends on whether or not we're, being taped or on stage if or you're not taped if you're just like meeting someone at their house or their office so then it's me then, then it's me. you yeah okay so um right it, you only come out on video or on or on podcast or on stage on podcast right um or okay. or in or in writing right um or in writing the reason, the reason why I offer the character thing is, is um, to, to, I think his name was Jeff who, who asked that question, yeah. is because it's actually extremely liberating. Because I think that the problem that people have with putting themselves out there is they feel exposed and they feel like they have to offer everything of themselves. And right. that's scary. And you know, you tell people to like, go put yourself on social media. And they're like, I don't want to put my whole life on social media. You don't 
have to. What you put on social media is the small slice of you, the 5% of you. You make 5% of you 100% of you. And you put that out there because that's all anybody wants. And so when you do that, you start to understand what your relationship is to your audience. You feel more comfortable and you feel more comfortable because now you know the, the, the boundaries in which to stay in. So, I mean, right. we can have, right? Like, it's not like you're, it's not like you're talking to, I'm not, it's not like I'm, um, it's not like I'm, uh, I'm Daniel Day Lewis here and like playing a completely different person, right? Like you're talking, you're right, talking right. to me, but we're staying within this bounds that I know the audience is interested in. And right. I'm talking in this way that I talk when I'm on stage. I don't talk like this normally. This is too much. If you're just saying, yeah. hey, work on camera. Do you you know, okay. Do you find yeah. though, because obviously you interview really interesting subjects, yeah. CEOs, celebrities, et cetera. Do you feel that they, this is like getting super meta and matrix, yeah. but do you feel that they are being a character for you? Yes. Like they're putting on their Beyonce, Sasha Fierce face because this person's coming to interview them. And if so, how do you get them to like get rid of that? Or is that just super hard? You, so you do a couple different things. First of all, if they're, it, it depends on how practiced they are. I, I once had, you know, one of the greatest interviews I've ever had was, was it was with, um, when I was at men's health and I, and I, I was the first major, whatever major outlet to interview Chris Pine because he was just the actor, because he was just in the new star Wars star movie Wars. and there was a breakout hit, uh, and, um, or Star Trek. Star Trek. Um, okay, was, yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, Star Trek. Um, and uh, and he wasn't practiced yet in talking to media, so he was just he was just like a bundle of nerves, and he was open about about his anxiety, and he started telling me about like his problems with his girlfriend or what. It was awesome because you never get that out of acting, right? Never. Because ever, people ever. are professionals, right? You know, they're totally professionals. Um, they're but I think that's true. Even when you're trying to interview someone like for a job, like you had to hire an assistant, everyone's putting on their best right. face. It's like, how do you get to the, so what you do get in there, what you do is you start by letting them say some of the stuff that they have canned, some of the stuff that's in their head. And then you just like, let it out. It's like letting an air out. It's like letting a balloon out. It's just, it's got to, it's got to go. Right, it's gonna it's gotta go. anything else until it does. Get that. it out. Get it out, and then you start you start picking, and you start um, you start trying to get underneath them by asking them to respond to ideas. So this is this is what I found is that uh, this is a, this is a trick that I learned while uh, you like tricks. Every, I love every tricks. I, say trick, I love tricks. Gotta, 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 gotta um. A trick I learned by watching Ira Glass, the the host of This American Life. I listened so, to that on my run this morning. Ira and I. Oh yeah, he's a he's he's a brilliant storyteller, and you I, know I never I, looked at a picture of him because I have an image of what he looks like in my head, and I don't want to ruin it. Oh, he looks exactly the way that you think he does. Okay, good. I, I wouldn't know. I've never seen a picture exactly of him. the picture. He's yeah, no, exactly. He's here. like a you know like a nerdy Jewish guy with glasses and like he's exactly who you think he is perfect um so so ira um ira said this thing at, at a talk that i attended in college or something i don't know um and it was it was that the way to get somebody to open up is to run a theory by them it doesn't have to be a good theory. You don't have to be correct in your theory, but okay. you want to get them to respond to an idea in a way in which they're not used to. So this is what I, I, I let somebody talk for a few minutes. I ask them a couple kind of opener questions. Um, I also signal to them. I will, I will try, I will take every avenue to get personal and try to get deeper because yeah. I want, I want to see how deep they'll go. Some people will stay very shallow and some people will kind of go in on it. And then, and then once you can see like where their tolerance level is, you can figure out where to start going. Um, but then you start running theories by them. So you say, you know, um, you know, you said this thing a minute ago, and then you also said this thing right now. And I, I wonder if they're connected in this way, because I feel like maybe what you're saying is that the reason that you don't do this or that is because um, you're concerned about X or Y. 
whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Right. But now you're signaling to them that you're really listening, that you're putting mm -hmm. pieces together and you're presenting them information in a different way because they've been asked every question a million times the same way. And, and asking them in this way and then asking it basically again, you, you ask the same question in different ways a couple times, you'll start to get under them. And they'll start to respond in these really interesting ways. And then you go wherever it seems like there's an intersection of where they're willing to go and where mm -hmm. your audience wants them to go. And that's going to be different for every person, which is why on Instagram, when we were, we were trading videos, going back and forth, I said, you don't want to go in with a set list of questions because it'll anchor you to a early an uninformed understanding of what the conversation is going to be. Whereas what you really want totally. is where the person goes and then lead them in the way that's most valuable for your audience. Are you a fan? I love Cal Fussman. Like I've been to his talks. I think he's amazing. And it's one of the things that he had an assignment for, I think it was Esquire yeah, somebody. Esquire. Yeah. And it was like the hundred most interesting people of the decade. Or, yep. And he, so he got access to like all these amazing people. And what struck me was that he said exactly what you said. He said, I would study people. I, I had a bank of, to your point, like 200 questions in the back of my mind, but then I ripped up the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I was like, ripped up the piece of paper, Yeah, ripped up the piece of paper and then just walked in the room. Right. And to somebody like me, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of the people who are joining us today, like the thought of ripping up a piece of paper is like, you killed my dog. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Rip right. up my piece of paper. Sure. Sure. But you have to do it. No, that's exactly, that's exactly right. I mean, Cal, Cal is right. I, I, I don't, I, I've met him. I, I don't follow his work very closely um, in part because I'll, I, I'll be honest, it's annoying to see someone like um, do a good job making a business off of telling people stuff that you already know. I, I just, I, I can't stand it. I, I, I just people have the same problem with Malcolm Gladwell. So like, there's a lot of hate with Malcolm Gladwell because they're like, oh, well, he's just telling us stuff that we already know. I love, right. I read all the books, so I drank the Kool-Aid, but I know he gets a lot of hate for that. Yeah, yeah. And and I actually, I used to be very skeptical of Malcolm until I, until I talked to him um, and, and then I really oh, liked him. He converted you? He converted me. He did. He did. I actually what, really. What was the big, I mean, how did you come out a believer? <sighs> he said something, he said a thing that. Every once in a while, somebody will say something to me that I immediately know I'm going to write this down. I'm going to repeat this a million times and I'm going to like say this on stage at some point. And, yes. um, and he, he did that. He did that. And, um, and it was, I was asking him what, I was asking him how he decides what a Malcolm Gladwell project was. I was like, Malcolm, how do you, how have you identified what, the tone and sensibility is of what you do such that you can decide what is a Malcolm Gladwell project. Hmm. And he said, um, he try, he tries his absolute best not to do that, that he actually hates thinking that way. And sure. He probably has done that. Like there, but there is a consistency to what he does, but, but he tries not to do that because, and then these were the words that I wrote down and have said on stage so many times because um, self-perception is powerfully limiting that if you uh, have a specific idea of what it is that you do and are, then you will shut off all these other opportunities for things that you might actually be great at, but that, but that you won't consider because you have a self-perception of what you are. Self-perceptions are powerfully limiting. And as soon as he said that, I grabbed a pen and I wrote it down and I stuck it on my wall and I was like, I'm repeating this and attributing it to Malcolm Gladwell forever because it's forever. a great point. It's not just a great point, but it's a great phrase. And, uh, and, and with that, I was like, okay, you got me. And, uh, and also revisionist history is a very good podcast. So, you know, what can I do? I mean, I feel like that is, it's similar to something I always think and talk about, which is, the things that I say, and that we all say, by the way, to ourselves are horrendous, yeah. horrendous. We are our own worst critic, like meanest critic, nasty, worst. Like when I think like, oh, what a nasty woman. Like I think of myself. Right. I'm like, I sure. am that nasty woman because uh -huh. 
I am so mean to myself, but we, we all are. And I think yeah. other people have a lot more grace to what you can be, what, what's possible than you do. Yeah. They see your value in a way that you don't because you're focused on the nitty gritty. I mean, I do it. I do it to myself too. I think that I have a good internal monologue. Like I have a good narrative of myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I fall victim every single day to looking around and being like, Oh, that person is doing that so much better than me. And, and I have comparison shopping. I have built nothing. Right. Yeah. Like I am completely, I do do that all. I do that all the time, but you know what? It's really valuable to hear people who you feel like are doing something that you wish to do saying that because you realize that it's like, it's that, it's that all the way up. You know, it's like self-doubting turtles all the way up, which is like when people tell me that COVID's going so well, I'm like, burn. It is, (laughs) it is a mess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not in my home. I haven't been in my home in six months. Like when people are like, I don't know, it's just so great. Like I'm just like baking banana bread. I'm like, I hate you. Yeah. Literally. So I mean, and that's you. You're you haven't been home. No. You're not in your not own. Or, like I don't even know how you're working. I mean, not only do you have a ton of jobs that are very stressful, but you're not even in your own. You know, your own like cocoon. Yeah. How, how are you staying productive? I mean, that's a struggle. It's been a real struggle. M- March to, can I, can I, I'm going to answer that. Can I just yes. add one other thing about the, about the interviewing people? Just one other thing to do is to remember that, um, to, to like not be afraid of asking people really personal questions. Um, like just because, you know, how much do you weigh? No. <laughs> I mean, I was about That's to say, a joke. don't ask anybody that, uh, no, don't ask anybody that, but, that, but nobody wants to know that, but, um, but like asking how people, whatever, and, and you know, like, I don't mean, I don't mean getting personal in a kind of inappropriate way, but like right. asking, trying to get down into people. Um, if you ask someone something and you get a sense that they're introspective enough to really like manage it, then, um, then, I, then, then go there, go there first, share something about yourself because that will open them up. Like, uh, like, you know, like I, I got this amazing anecdote out of Dwayne, the rock Johnson and his business partner, Danny Garcia, by like going on a five minute monologue first about this extremely awkward thing that I did. And then I was basically like, now tell me an awkward thing that you did. And they did. And it was great. Right. So, um, so you have to like kind of go there with the person, but keep in mind that they want to please you and they want to please your audience and they're on the spot. So just ask them, like, just don't be afraid to ask them. It, it really, it, it's, it's amazing. Once you realize the power that you have while you're interviewing people like that, you're not, you can't, you don't have to tiptoe around them. You can go in pretty amazing direction. So, so to your question, um, which brings me to how are you dealing with the train wreck of working from home? Yeah, right. No, it's true, personal great, with it. Great question. Wife, kids, parents. I mean, right. you, you got it all. No, it's a real train wreck. It's a real train wreck. Um, so the the train has been the train has been brought a largely not fully, but a lot onto the tracks thanks to um, full time camp in Boulder, Colorado. So from March when we moved out here to June when camp started, that was that was I had every and I, I want to be so clear about this. I had every advantage, every, every, every advantage. I maintained my, I maintained my income. I was living with my parents who are amazing grandparents, very active. Um, we had, we were, we had space to move around. Um, nobody was sick. I had every, every advantage and it was still the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I mean, I think we're all going through a very difficult season and I feel refreshing when I hear other people say like, this is hard. Yeah. And then I want to know how they're dealing with it so I can steal their ideas and use them for myself. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a couple of things. Um, I'll tell you a couple of things. So, yeah. so one, I rearranged my days. Um, I, uh, I, I, I divided my day into, into two. Um, so I think of it as, uh, first part of the day is productivity. The second part of the day is planning. So in productivity, which is from when the kids go to camp at nine until about, like I try to make it about one. Um, I, I take no calls. Uh, I, I take no meetings. I do no interviews. I do nothing. Uh, Kim, you have, I've, I've allowed you into productivity time here. This is very rare. Otherwise 
otherwise I would have said no. Um, because, um, because this is usually time where my brain is freshest and, uh, and I know that I, I think fastest. And so this is time where I write and I edit and I make podcasts. Um, because I could do it later in the day, but it'll take me twice as much time. So I have to play to my own strengths. So that's the first part of the day. And then once I, and then I, and then I cram it all in all at once, which I didn't usually do, um, which means that by like 1 PM, like my brain is like fried because I've just been sitting straight for hours writing. And now it's time to move on to administrative tasks and taking calls and doing interviews, which I can basically do in my sleep. And like, you know, whatever the case is, um, right. I'm, I'm just, I, that's when I do that. And so that's how I divide the day. And then also, um, I'm saying no to way more things. I'm saying no to, to almost everything. And I am making people, if people want to talk to me and it's not, uh, it's something that I, 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 I'm happy to do, but I don't see it as, um, it's not additive to, to the goals of the day. Um, I make them talk to me very late at night. So once my kid goes to bed at 8 p.m. mountain time, it's 10 p.m. for almost everybody I know back east, that's when I can talk to you. And so people reach out to me and they're like, hey, can we, I really love your thoughts on this podcast or whatever. Like, you know, like there's, there's You're um, like 10 p.m. 10 p.m. We'll talk at 10 p.m. for you. There's a, there's a, you know, there's a couple that's making a podcast that I'm, they, they wanted me to consult with them on. And I, uh, you know, I said, okay, here's a rate and we have to talk at 10 p.m. And they said, okay. Okay. Two things. One everyone we've squeezed into Jason's fresh time. So flood the chat with questions because we got him while he's hot. And two, you, you sort of glazed over it. The terms of like saying no. Yeah. And I am still learning. Mm -hmm. I read so many freaking self-help books about saying no. And like, I'll be good about it. it. Reminds me of like new year's resolutions. I'll be really good about saying no for like two weeks. And then I fall off the train and I end up doing all this stuff I don't want to do. So like, what's your, what's your key? Like, how do you say no? I need to get better at that. So I say no by, um, I'm, I'm pulling up the example here. Uh, Do you have a canned no? Yes. <gasps> so not only do I have a canned no, ready? Ready? I just, I, I was like making sure it worked. Okay. Here it is. Wait, here's, here's what? I see your phone. Now we're going to type, we're going to type DDD. DDD. D. No. <gasps> there it is. There's the can. No, I appreciate what? it. Unfortunately, the schedule is so tight that I have to decline most opportunities. Goodbye. <laughs> can no. Goodbye. You got DDD. You got -D -D -D. Wow. Um, goodbye. I don't have time. And then, you, and then you just like file that email away and you're like, okay, smell you later. Yeah. I don't have time. I don't have time. Time is my most valuable resource. I don't have that much of it. You know, I mean, it's crazy. People want like it be either direction, right? Like how many emails do you get? They're like, Hey, can I get 15 minutes of your time? 15 minutes of my time is very valuable. It's yes. very valuable. And I don't mean in that in like some kind of special way. I mean that I just don't have that much of it. It's right. valuable. Don't ask me for that. It's like walking up to somebody and be like, Hey, do you mind if I have a thousand dollars? No, you don't get a thousand dollars. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I brought this up. I had my friend Micah on a couple yeah. weeks ago and she's an etiquette expert, but very similar to this, people try to slide in my LinkedIn and they're like, we should connect because you could be beneficial to me. And I'm like, me, me be beneficial to you. So, Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Back up the train. Right. Wait, yes. what? And it's the same thing of like, yeah, you get emails of like, can I pick your brain for 15 minutes so that you can benefit me? And I'm right. like, we, I missed a step in here somewhere. I get that really. all day, every day. And of course, do you the, have a can message for that too? Um, no, I usually just no. ignore that. Um, uh, I usually just ignore that. Yeah. It depends on what it is. Sometimes if I'm feeling yeah. nice, I will, I'll respond, um, more specifically, but usually when people are reaching out to me and they're looking for something, I always think of it as ordering a hamburger. It's like they reach out to me and try to order a hamburger. Right. And like the order a hamburger for me is always because of course, what do people want from me? It's always, Hey, I'd like to be featured in the magazine. 
Hey, how I, I'd like to, I'd like to write an article for entrepreneur.com. You're ordering a hamburger. I I'm not here to serve you. I'm not a service provider. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, but like, and that's not, I'm just, I'm not talking just about me here. That's it's everybody. We are all treated like service providers for other people. And unless your job is literally to serve hamburgers and somebody comes up and orders you a hamburger, don't treat somebody that way. That is stupid. Instead, what you should yeah. do is do your absolute best to show up and say, here's how I can provide value to you. You provide and how value. how do you do that? Like Jeff just asked the question of like, okay, how do you, you like you're, you're okay, you're an entrepreneur. If you're not going to ask to get an article in the magazine, like what do you do? So if we're talking specifically about how to get press, then the first thing that you need to do <sighs> The really first thing that you need to do is ask yourself why you're trying to get press like that. You need to ask that because most people's answer is like, because I deserve it or because I've always loved entrepreneur and I'm an entrepreneur or whatever the case is. Those are terrible, terrible answers. Do you go out and raise money from investors because it feels good? You do not. You got to have a plan. I'm convinced some people do. <laughs> yeah, I think that I mean, it's possible, but you shouldn't. But you shouldn't. Correct. You shouldn't. You're going to no. give part of your company away and create a boss, and then and 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 uh, unreasonable growth expectations because it feels good. That is stupid. So don't do that. But if you do have a specific reason, which could be because you have a product launch and you want to get attention for it, or because you're going to go out to investors for a good reason and you want to show them that you're legitimate and taking seriously in the industry, whatever the case is, um, street then cred. You, then you find the street cred. Then you find the publications that are going to deliver on that, right? Because not every publication is going to deliver in the same way. And I don't mean like the way they're going to do it. I just mean like perception in the marketplace. If you're, you know, if you're selling dumbbells, you don't need a story in entrepreneur because that's not going to sell you any dumbbells. Right. You want a story no. in men's health. That's going to sell you some dumbbells. Right. So right. If you now, if you've reached out to me, uh, let's say that you've decided that I am the person that you want to reach out to or, or somebody on my team. Um, and you, uh, or anywhere else, anywhere else, mm -hmm. spend time understanding how they write stories, the kinds of information that they share, the way that they relate yep. to their readers. What is this publication doing? And therefore, how can you fit into what they already do? That's uh, well, I tell people all the time, like you, if you to want to increase your risk of success, which everyone does, mm -hmm. you should do that person's work for them. Yes. Literally. Like I've asked, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I needed an introduction to an artist manager that I didn't, I didn't know last week. And I knew that we had a friend in common. And I said in all in one email, I said, one, I need an introduction to this person. And I know you know them. Two, you know that I'm not a weirdo, so like this shouldn't be that hard. And three, I have pre-written the email for you. Amazing. Literally, all you have to do is yes. cut and paste this email. It will take you roughly 30 seconds to change where it says thanks at the bottom. I literally put like, thanks, Kyle, and send it. Yeah. And, and I have a high success rate because... They don't have to draft the email. They don't have to think about what they're going to say. They don't. And I, I don't want to say I've done this. Maybe I have actually submitted articles to writers where I literally write the majority of the article because I'm like, I will do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. You're going to zhush it up. <laughs> but like, seriously, I, because the people don't have time going back to what you said, time is their most valuable asset. It's like, they don't want to do the extra work for mm -hmm. you. They don't even know you. That's right. That's excellent advice. That's exactly what you should do. You need to know what's valuable to them because, you know, you care about you and they care about them. So if you can flip the script and go care about them, then they might care about you or they at least are going to be willing to do the thing that you want. But, mm -hmm. but when you reach out and you're just like, I would like a feature in the magazine. It's like, I don't sell hamburgers. <laughs> so you're like about that hamburger shop, right? No, great. Gonna, I don't, I don't know how to run a hamburger shop. Maybe you no. should go run a hamburger shop. <laughs> not what I'm doing over here. Not here no. because you must get what hundreds. Yeah. I would imagine that your DMS and your messages and your email yeah. inbox is just filled with like hundred. What's like the funniest. Okay. So I'll tell you what I used to do the, we've all had this person, by the way, I've had clients or people that they just kind of like ghost you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're busy. They have a lot sure. of stuff in their inbox. 
So I used to send emails that have, I sometimes still do this, subjects lines that say knock, knock. Mm -hmm. And when they open up the email, it says, who's there? And it says like, not you, because you're, no you're ignoring me. <laughs> like, who's going to talk to me about this? And people would respond because they thought it was so funny. Huh. Because I was, I was like, let's be honest. You're ignoring me. You right. know you're ignoring me. So like, whatever. But like, have you ever had somebody get into your inbox that you... I mean, because you get so many, but you're like, that was actually really clever. Yes. It still doesn't earn the win. Right. And sometimes when people are clever, there was a person on LinkedIn, maybe they're watching. If they're <gasps> watching, I'm not going to say your name. Okay. But I hope that this is a learning experience. Um, so there's a person, I have a lot of people who just keep trying to get a story out of me, right? Like okay. it'll go on for years or they'll pitch me and be like, you know, congratulations. This is, and usually I don't, I, I don't have time to respond, but if I do respond, if I respond, don't make me regret it. Don't punish me for being in touch. Right. But I get punished. And the punishment is that now they think that they're in dialogue. And so, um, Got it. so I, and, and they just keep coming back in the same, in the same way. Right. Like uh, there's that great, quote that maybe Albert Einstein said, or at least is attributed to him, that madness is doing the same thing uh, over and over and expecting different results. So um, so people will, the people who are really smart about engaging with me, and, and again, like I, I don't want to talk about me as if I'm like some super special, like this is anybody, right? Yes, anyone, um, no. Anybody. I'm a stand in for anybody here. Um, uh, the people who are really smart about it are, they, 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 they do the Gary Vaynerchuk, jab, 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 right hook, right? Which is to say, give, give, give before they ask. I have yeah. had people who have just engaged with me for years before they ever ask anything. Right. Years. And what are they doing? They're commenting on my stuff or their whatever it is. Um, and, um, uh, they're just, they're just showing that, that, that they're paying attention. I mean, I love, I am the, the greatest, I am the biggest sucker in the world for anybody who's listened to an episode of a podcast of mine. Like, well, I was going to say, world. I feel like, and no offense to anybody who wants to get an, an article published in Entrepreneur, it's freaking yeah. amazing. No, no diss. But I actually think when we talk about blue ocean, like uh -huh. the spot where people aren't, I think it's podcasts. I think if you get on podcasts that is an area that everyone thinks, oh, I have to get an entrepreneur. Or I have to get in Forbes. I have to get in. If you get on a podcast, that's Let's talk big. about that. That's talk about. I'm going to finish big. my, I'm going to, I'm going to still um, semi out this person. And then let's talk about that. Cause that's really, that's a really important insight. I think you're absolutely right. Totally. So, um, so, okay. So this person for years has been pitching me the same thing, their company. Oh, now are you interested? Now are you interested? Here's right. a random small amount of new information. Now are you interested? So, so the, so just last night person sends me a note and says, uh, you know, to keep you updated, um, here's a, here's like a, you know, here's a deal that we got. It's a good deal. Congratulations on the deal. So yeah. I wrote back. I don't know why I'm responding. I, I, I it's, the reason I'm responding is you because should have DDD. I should have, but it doesn't. It didn't. DDD, but she wasn't didn't. an ask for a DDD. It was okay. like here's information about us, right? And so I, I just responded, "Congrats!" And the person responded, "Is that congrats? I'm considering coverage an entrepreneur <laughs> and would like to know more about this company, or just plain congrats?" And so now I'm sour, and I just wrote right. <laughs> just plain congrats to which the person wrote back. That's the worst cut, worst type of congrats and a frowny face. We're done. We're done. I don't know what you're trying to do, but that's not the way. That's not the way. That's right? the way. Worthy. That's the part of the movie where I'm under the blanket going, no, no. <laughs> Right. It's not the way, like the way Ouch. is to develop a relationship, not to every single time that I hear from you to, to just be like, now can I have it? Now can I have it? Now yeah. can I have it? No. And no. listen, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I want a million people to develop relationships with me. And I'm not right. saying that that's what you need to do with everybody. Because sometimes people have reached out to me and they've just told me something interesting. And I'm like, that's great. And I make a story out of it. Right. right. But, but all the same, if you want to be strategic about that, if you want to try to play the long game, then literally play the long game. The long game is not asking for the same thing over and over again. It's being different. A hundred. I mean, if more people did that, I think it's people think that it's too simple 
like, oh, that can't work because it's so simple. Yeah. And it's like, no, there's a reason why peanut butter and jelly has been the best sandwich for like years and years. It's simple. You get simple. it. Phoebe and Jay. Don't come at me with all this avocado turkey stuff. You know, it's funny. It's funny. I used to, I, I, I came up with this little phrase that I don't use publicly very often, but, um, but it was more of an internal, internal phrase, um, which was, um, I realized once I went through that, like thought leader thing and I was like, yeah. how do I be a thought leader? I realized that the secret is, and here's the phrase I realized that the secret is saying obvious things in snappy ways. That's the secret. Because the thing is that we've had a nice conversation for the last hour, but we have not said any rocket science. Because there is no rocket science to any of it. But this. that's the hardest part. It's like saying right. no. It's like what in my head, I'm like, Kim, this is embarrassing that you can't say no to people. But right. it's like, and if you ask me to do something complicated, I'm like, shh, no problem. But right. simple stuff, I'm like, can't yeah. do it. I know. It's amazing. And that's and there's there's like such a there's an economy about that. Right? <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk, I, I really I think I I have a lot of respect for him. His stuff is it's obvious things in snappy ways. The thank you economy. He wrote a, wrote a whole book to, about saying thank you to people. <laughs> but but you know what? The thing is that people need to hear it because, because the, the, all this stuff, it, none of it is mind blowing, but it's all things that you forget once you get into the tunnel of need, right? The tunnel of need is like where that person who was on my LinkedIn got trapped. They're trapped in the tunnel of need. And so they can't see outside of it. And, uh, and, and it like, and so you just need these reminders, these constant reminders to, to, to just get out of it. It's hard. It's, it's yeah. Listen, that there's, there's reasons why people are, write successful books. Yes. It's hard. I know. It's hard stuff. Okay. I have to copy your homework a little bit. Okay. In like a speed round. Sure. Because I just finished my matcha tea and I'm all hyped up. Yeah. No, you're okay. really, I, I like how you're really living the, the coffee with Kim. You're like, you're just, you're rocking through that. I'm, I'm I, all, I'll, I'm all the way. And I brought the MT. Flat seltzer while you. Whatever. You're, you're flat seltzer teeing. It's cool. Throw a tea bag in there. You're fine. Sure. Okay. I like speed round questions, which yes. what is the best app or program that you are using lately that I need to download after we end this? Oh, I don't know that I have a great, oh, well. Your shortcut, I'm definitely going to download. So that's already going to happen. Sure. Do the shortcut. The shortcuts um, is great. Do the shortcut. Um, um, if you are, uh, well, okay, here. If you are in any kind of content production at all, if you're a podcaster, mm -hmm. if you make videos, um, if you write and interview people, whatever it is, Descript. D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T, Descript. What does that do? Oh, my. Oh, what doesn't it do? It's amazing. Okay. It it so, so here's, here, I, I make these podcasts. They're not. Q and A podcasts. They're no. highly produced podcasts. So that means that I'm talking to lots Everyone of people. Everyone should download it, by the way. Pessimists Archive. That's the one. Please check it out. Pessimists we'll Archive. We'll drop it, it in the comments for yeah, sure. Yeah, drop it in the comments. It's a history. It's it's a it's a show about why the pessimists of the past were wrong and how to be optimistic about the future. By the way, that is a new line that I just came up with. I'm trotting it out. I feel good about it. So I feel good about it. it. So thank you. So um, um, so okay, here's what I, I interview someone, I throw it into Descript. It does a AI transcription like this, like three minutes later, it's transcribed. It's like I, I would say 95% correct, which is amazing. Then I can scan through and let's say that I want the part where Kim said, I'm hyped up on matcha tea. Then I I I highlight in text. And then I click a button and now I have an individual file just of you saying that. I used to have to do that manually before. And here's even better. Wow. What if Kim says, what if Kim says um, I'm hyped up on uh, matcha tea? Well, then I can highlight the word uh, hit delete, and it is deleted from the audio. It's amazing. It's so good. It changed my life as a, as a producer of podcasts. It changed my life. So check okay. out the script. Definitely downloading that. That sounds freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. Best gift that you've given yourself in the last year. Cause I know you give gifts to your kids and your wife, but like yourself. Yeah. Best gift I've given myself. <sighs> I, I'm not good with self care. I'm not, I'm not good with self-care. Um, I'm just not. Um, I Maybe that's something to work on. It's like a therapy session, Jason. I, Maybe yeah, you need true. to start giving gifts to yourself. 
I've downloaded, a, I mean, I've bought a bunch of equipment that makes me very happy. Like these, these okay. microphones. That's microphone. Um, they're all kind of, I, I, I'll be honest, they're all kind of work related. Um, they're it. all work related. I, all right. I'm bad at self care. You're bad at self care. Fine. Okay. Besides your own podcast, what is a podcast or newsletter or whatever that you learn from? So not that you like, but that you yeah. learn from. Right. Okay. I have always learned not through things that are designed for learning. Um, I don't read business books. I don't like instructional anything. I've never, ever liked it. Um, I find it, I, I, it, my eyes glaze over. I just, I can't. So um, the things that have always opened my eyes throughout my life are are work products works by someone who is showing me that the boundaries are not where I thought they were. So I remember, for example, being in high school or college and reading two books. One was uh, a fan's notes by Frederick Exley. And the other was a heartbreaking work of staggering genius by Dave Eggers. And both of them, they're both memoirs. And both okay. of them said the same thing to me, which is like, you can do this, like the, the, the style of writing, completely different right. from anything you've ever seen. The structure of this book, completely different from anything you've ever seen. Like the boundaries are not where you think they are, they're over there. And so, um, um, and that has always excited me. So everything that I've ever really loved are things that I learn from because they show me that the boundaries are somewhere else. So right now, I'll give you two podcasts that I listen to that are not, they're not gonna teach you anything but i listen to them and it, it, they inspire me it's like inspiration I, it shows me that things are and it, it, but it also once you start thinking about the way that they're doing it, it it teaches you for example so there's this one called richard's famous food podcast i know it's not what okay. you're expecting to say. um richard's famous food podcast is barely about food it is about food but what it really is is this insane just check it out it's hard to describe it's this it's this amazingly produced completely crazy uh like experiment in audio um in which things are it just feels like things are coming it's like you're walking through a crazy land and uh just the I, you, I, you don't know what I'm talking about until you listen to it. Richard's famous food podcast. But when I listen okay. to it as a creator, what I hear, aside from just really enjoying it, what I hear is um, the pace of comedy is amazing. The layering of audio uh, as a way to um, make a point is amazing. Um, the way that he has these recurring jokes that don't just move throughout the episode, but actually move throughout the whole series is amazing. And it just gets me thinking about ways that I can do my version of those kinds of things. I think that my podcast in the last couple episodes have gotten snappier and mm -hmm. um, uh, like because I'm listening to this show. So um, so that's one. And then the other one is called uh, that I also really love is called Everything is Alive, which is uh, which is um, interviews with inanimate objects. So like an interview with a bar of soap and an interview with uh, with um, with like, a subway seat. It's so delightful because they really have thought through what the perspective on life would be from the bar of soap. And I just, it's just great writing. And so I, I like, those are the kinds of things that inspire me. I never listen. I don't listen to business podcasts. I don't listen to business books. No, it's, it's about what inspires you, not yeah. what inspires everybody else. Okay. Last speed question is what is one thing that everyone should try this week? Could be a TV show, hmm. could be food, could be listening to your podcast, like <laughs> what should, what should everyone try this week that you're I like, should, yeah, this is right. what you should be doing. Right. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I appreciate that you sort of opened the window to making this self-promotional. Um, I'm not going to say listen to Pessimist Archive, but I just did. Uh, what should everybody try this week? Um, man, oh man. Saying uh, no. Well, that's, we could, you certainly could go to that. Saying no is a, is a great, oh, you know what here? Let me, let me push you. Let me put, I'll push you, I'll push you a little differently. Um, everybody this week should post something on social media <sighs> that they think is valuable to their audience, but that they are a little embarrassed to post. And the reason that I say that is because that was the, that was one of the biggest hurdles for me. 
and, and, and Kim, I'm sure you went through the same thing. That was the biggest hurdle for me in starting to utilize my outlets for what I would think of as a personal brand, which is that I knew yeah. like I have friends and, and like suddenly I'm going to become this guy who's just like giving advice and being earnest in this way that I'm like not really in person. And, um, and, uh, and it was awkward and I started doing it. And you know, the craziest thing was, first of all, a lot of strangers started coming and loving my stuff, but also people that I've worked with in the past and friends were saying, I really love, like, I am inspired by this. And that shocked me because I thought that they were going to look at this and be like, unfollow, like I am done with this, right? Like I was following Jason, the person, and now I've got like Jason right. the brand and I'm not now into that. Now you've got part. Sasha Fierce. Yeah, exactly. But actually, as it turns out that if you figure out, if you give yourself permission to be valuable to people, even mm -hmm. if it feels kind of uncomfortable, then right. they will, they will only receive the value. It turns out that if you're not afraid of value, then, then you're, um, then you're able to provide the value. I love that challenge. I'm going to do the challenge. You do it all the time. The challenge. You do like, it. Jason told me to do this. So you, now I'm doing it. Yeah. No, you should do it. You do it already. You do. Such yeah, but I'm going to make like a climb and I'm going to get, I'm going to dig, I'm going to dig for like dig. a good okay. one. I'm going to you know? be watching. I'm watching. It's not, maybe it won't, it won't even be a Sasha Fierce one. It'll be like a Kim one. <laughs> You know? I want it. That's, I want that, it. That I'm matters. There, I'm here for it. Ugh. Well, Jason, thank you for letting us into your productive time because oh, you guard gosh. that. And so I so appreciate it. We so appreciate it. You're such a gem. Where can people get more Jason or where are you most active? Oh, thank you. So thank you, Kim. I am super impressed with what you do. I was very happy to participate. Hello. Thank you to everybody who's been watching. A um, couple things. Uh, one, um, like I said, Pessimist Archive, check it out. Number two, um, I'm most active on LinkedIn and Instagram. I do respond to every DM. I really do, but please don't try to, you know, don't don't do that thing that that guy did that I talked about ten minutes ago. Um, and um, um, and then also, I have a newsletter uh, called the Fight for Five. It's a monthly newsletter, and uh, it's a five most uh, five five most insightful things that I found that month uh, related to entrepreneurship and personal growth. So you can find that at my website, JasonPfeiffer.com. I love it. Ah, uh, and by the way, next week. We have Chesley Christ, who's Miss USA, mm. who I don't know if you knew this, Jason, because I didn't know this until I judged the Miss USA competition. Do you know that being Miss USA is actually a job? Like right. you legitimately have a job description, you have a salary, and Ooh. you can be fired for not meeting the things on your job description. I did not know that. So I also a didn't lot know, of people that didn't know that, judged. including me. So yeah. I'm excited for next week because I feel like I'm we're gonna learn a lot from Chesley. I'm so I, I'll be, I'll, I'll be there. It's, as, it's during as, your as productive as hours. So you won't be there, but you'll watch it True. after 10 PM when you become available to other humans. It's video on demand. That's the beauty of this video on demand. I love it. Well, thank you, Jason. You're the thank best. You, Happy You're the week, best. everybody. Thanks everyone. Yay.